Hey, how's it going everybody? This is Craig Peters here from Sound Iron, and in today's Sound Iron session, we're going to be breaking down a track that I wrote in sort of a dark, moody EDM style, so stick around. <laughs> So for this Sound Iron session, I wanted to do something a little bit different. When I was writing this track for Winter Bells, I wanted to do something a little bit out of my comfort zone. I don't really do a lot of like EDM inspired stuff. Not that this is a full EDM style track, but I wanted to do something a little bit different, switch it up, do some things that are a little bit more out of my wheelhouse, I guess I should say. So let's just go ahead and check out the track and then we'll start breaking it down. All right, so that's the track. As you can hear, it's got a little bit of that EDM kind of vibe to it. Uh, I wouldn't call this an EDM track per se. It's not really my style, but I definitely had some uh, inspiration with some of the different instruments and effects that I used to give it that kind of stuttery, uh, kind of EDM pulsing vibe and that sort of thing. So as I mentioned, this was a demo that I wrote for Winter Bells, which is a new upgrade that we came out with basically completely overhauling sleigh bells. So it's new and improved and has a lot of really cool sounds and new ambiences. So. So the very first sound that I loaded up that kind of led me on the journey to creating this track was this effects preset called Fairy Dust. And has a really cool sound, very uh, atmospheric, but chimey at the same time. So you have these. It's a really nice sound, sounds cool. So let's just go ahead and solo it. This is what we got so far. Really, really simple melody. I just wanted something that had a little bit of that haunting sound to it. The next sound or effects preset that I loaded up is called Glockenspiel MW, and this is from Winter Bells as well. And it utilizes the mod wheel, so as you increase the mod wheel, you get a little bit more of that sine wave underneath, just kind of thickens up the sound a little bit and helps it make it sound a little bit more melodic, I think. And then I pretty much use this sound as a way just to kind of make those higher notes of the melody punch out a little bit more. So you can see without this uh, glockenspiel track, it just sounds like this. And then when I go ahead and add this next track here, I, I sort of make the melody punch out a little bit more. So I didn't want to doing the same thing as the Fairy Dust track, I just wanted to use it just as a way of making those top parts of the melody punch out a little bit more. So moving on, the next instrument that I have is basically a duplicate of the Glockenspiel MW track, and I use the arpeggiator just to kind of add a little bit more movement, you know, picking up the track a little bit. And then I also have this gated ambience down here, and uh, this sounds really cool. And uh, we'll go into the effects and how I process this a little bit later.
And this is just using Ambience 10 from the Ambiences in Winter Bells, so it sounds like this when you play it by itself. Without that gated effect, it sounds like this. And then with that gated effect, sounds like this. The next thing I loaded up was this really cool bass drop from Groove Agent, and I utilized the dubstep kit as a way of just kind of flushing out the, the more drum, EDM, dubstep kind of drums for this track, which I ended up swapping out a little bit later on, but I kept the bass drop, and it sounds really cool. It sounds like this. And I, I just thought that was really cool and definitely worth keeping in there. And then after that, we got Glitch Hero, and I utilized the tape kits, put a little bit of an arpeggiator on here, and it sounds like this. Let me go ahead and solo these out. And then without any effects, sounds like this. So I thought that was pretty cool. It was just like a little percussive uh, rhythmic layer underneath. And then as the track moves forward, we got these other effects presets called Loop Santa In. And these are really cool, just cool little loops. I have uh, two different loops on the left and the right. Sounds like this. You know, just giving it some of that stereo shaking going on. And then since this is kind of like a dark, moody, EDM style track, I wanted to incorporate some human elements, so I brought in some vocals, and I used our Voice of Wind, Audrey, and I'm using the Legato patch, and then I also have another kind of cool gated effect on here as well, so let's go ahead and listen to how this sounds. So I thought that was a pretty interesting element, wanted to keep it in there and, you know, taking a human element, sound designing it a bit more and uh, giving it a little bit more of that electronic feel. So I thought that was cool. So for this next track, it's called Ambient Drone Legato. And this is something that I created using some of the different features within Winter Bells. And I utilized the Legato design. So I took an ambience. If I turn this off, sounds like this. This is using Ambience 3. And then what I did is I engaged the legato design and set it to portamento to give it that smooth transition between notes. So as you press and hold. It gives it that big ambient drone legato sound, hence the name ambient drone legato. And then I went and utilized this to create this kind of melody on top. So let's go ahead and listen to that. And then at bar 24, I'm bringing in this other ambience, just as more for adding texture, so you can hear how this sounds together. And then when I remove it, it sounds like this. And I thought that ambient sounded awesome. It definitely brought a lot of character and has a lot going on. You can hear all these little elements and stuff going on. And that's just a contribution to Nathan Bowler and his awesome sound designing ability. So I thought that was really cool and, and worth layering in underneath that drone legato. So you have this. And then with the layered ambience.
and then in context. So before we get into what I use for the drums, I want to talk about this really cool reverse sound. And this is using an effects preset called Reversed. And I use this as just a way to swell into the next beat. So it sounds like this by itself. And then going into the next part, this is how I used it to just swoop into the next beat. So I really liked that sound and thought it was useful as a way to swell into the next beat. So as I mentioned earlier, I was using Groove Agent and their dubstep kit as a way to flesh out the inspiration for the track, but I ended up swapping them out. And what I ended up swapping it out for was Glitch Hero. So for the kick, I'm using the Low Ensemble and this is how it sounds by itself. And I'm pretty much just using the kick as a way of building anticipation as the track moves along. And then I start to incorporate the snare and kind of fleshing out a beat. So that sounds like this. And then for the snare, I'm also using a sound from Glitch here. I'm using the tape kits and that sounds like this. Without any processing, sounds like this. And then if you remember that other hi-hat arpeggiated groove thing I had going on earlier, I thought it'd be cool to bring that back. So it sounds like this all together. And then in context. So before we wrap up the overall composition of the track, and there's this other element that I want to touch on that we haven't touched on yet. And it's bringing in another human element, and this is the Voice of Wind 80, the dark 100 BPM phrases. And I thought it'd be cool to try something different. I've seen other people do this in their compositions for more like drill beat style tracks. And uh, so it was something I wanted to try out. And what I did is I went up here and I pitched this up an octave. It normally sounds like this. And you can hear there's a little bit of that kind of stutter towards the end. And that's because I used variable and I stretched it 100%. How it would sound natural sounds like this. So you can see it's very slow and very uh, emotional and expressive, but what I went and did was switched it to variable so that way it fit within the context of the timing of the track. And then with the processing sounds like this. We'll touch on that in a little bit. And then to wrap up the track, I'm pretty much using earlier elements as a way to kind of bookend this track. So it starts off and ends very similar. Uh, I have these gated elements. I have the ambient drone legato. I also have the fairy dust and glockenspiel sounds. <laughs> And then another thing that I did for this gated ambience that I didn't talk about earlier is I did some panning automation just as a way to add some movement to the track. And, you know, I always love experimenting with different panning and just adding movement, not only in the, in the context of the sounds, but in the context of the stereo positioning and that sort of thing. So when you solo it, it sounds like this. So right now it's down the center. And then it starts to move. And then another thing that I did is a little bit different on the end is I just used these little bits of the Voice of Wind Audrey. And then it stops. So 
So I thought it'd be cool to bring that sound back, but use just a little bit of it, just as a way of bringing in some familiar sounds, but modifying in a different way, just to kind of, like I said, put that bookend closing to the track. So with that said, now let's get into some of the mixing. <laughs> So for this first track, Fairy Dust, I used an EQ in a little bit of more of a creative way. So normally, you know, when it comes to EQ, I usually use it in more of like a subtractive EQ way or if I want to boost certain frequencies and that sort of thing. But for this, what I did is I wanted to use it in a way of uh, filtering out. So right now it's super filtered. And then it starts to come back and open up. So it's another way that you can use EQs in a little bit more of a musical way. And then for those glockenspiel effects, I'm using the Valhalla Vintage Verb, and this is one of my favorite reverbs. Uh, Valhalla actually recently updated this and brought in some new modes, and I'm using the Cathedral mode, which I thought sounded really cool. Sounds like this. Without. So I'm just using this reverb as a way of just adding some ambience to that sound. And then for those two effects tracks of the loop Santa in left and right, I'm just using an EQ, just basically taking out a bunch of high end and low end, uh, not really wanting it to be super chimey and very in your, in your face. I just wanted it to be a little bit more carved out and just kind of there adding movement, but not necessarily being at the forefront. So it sounds like this. And then if I didn't have the EQ, it would sound like this. So it's not a huge dramatic difference, but just enough just to kind of darken it to where it sits a little bit more in the mix. And then after that, we got that reverse sound that we had from earlier. So let's go ahead and check that out by itself. No effects. So the EQ on this reverse sound is the same thing, just carving off some of the high and low end. Uh, sounds like this. And then after that, we got some reverb. I got the Valhalla Vintage Verb again. And then I'm also using the S1 Imager from Waves, and this is just kind of helping spread the sound a little bit more in the stereo field. So as you can see, the settings are pretty modest. I'm not really using this in a drastic way, just enough just to add a little bit more width and just making the sound spread out a little bit more left and right. And then for that ambient drone legato track, I wanted to add some decapitator to take this sound, this big kind of you know beefy ambient sound and give it a little bit more grit and hair. So I went and utilized this. Uh, let's go ahead and listen to how it sounds without it. And then with. So I thought that sounded really cool and just takes the sound and just kind of thickens it up, beefs it up, and just makes it a little bit more aggressive, which I thought was really cool. And then I also have some other spatial effects. So I'm using the Valhalla Shimmer and the settings are using the octave up and down, which is a really cool preset. It definitely adds that, you know, extra octave and just movement and just, I really like what it does. So now let's listen to how that sounds with this. So you can see as the sound plays, it starts to bring in this extra octave. Which I thought was really cool. It definitely kind of has that Blade Runner vibe, I think. And then for that ambience from Winter Bells, to get that sort of electronic gated vibe, what I did was I used Transgate, which is from Kilo Hearts, and it's perfect plug-in if you want to sort of get that gated, stuttery, electronic sound. And this is how it sounds without it. And then with.
And then for the reverb on this track, I'm using the FabFilter Pro R, and I don't normally use this plugin a lot. Uh, I'm using a preset called Heavily Modulated Ambience B, and I just thought it was cool sounding reverb. It's a great reverb, I just don't use it a lot, but you know, I wanted to switch it up and not just always using the same ones all the time. You know, it's very easy to get caught up in using the same plugin, so this was definitely me trying to expand outside of what I normally use, even though, you know, I have a bunch of different reverbs. This was a really cool one for that. And this is how it sounds without this reverb. And then with. And then after that, let's go ahead and start checking out the kick sound. And this is from Glitch Hero. And basically what I did was I kind of approached EQing this kick a little bit like how I would with like a metal kick drum. So, you know, carving out these frequencies you don't really need, boosting around 80 hertz, just kind of adding that low end thump to it, that sub harmonic frequencies. And then I got this boost up here, which is where normally the click of the kick is. And then I just carved out the mids and low mids just as a way of scooping it out and just really making it sound like punchy, but have that low end at the same time, sort of trying to get that smiley face EQ curve. So without it, it sounds like this. So I thought that was pretty meaty and aggressive sounding. And then I'm also using this JST Clip plugin. And pretty much this is a plugin that I would use on kicks, especially if I was doing a metal style track, just as a way of limiting it and just getting the most out of the sound and just really kind of pushing it. So without it sounds like this. So it definitely makes it a lot more in your face. So for the snare sound from Glitch Hero, I pretty much approached it in the same way I would approach a metal snare as well. Uh, not really too much in the same similar fashion, but pretty much just filtering out a lot of lower frequencies that don't necessarily need to be there. Carving out a little bit of this 466 hertz range and then boosting a little bit past 4K just as a way of adding a little bit more thwack and attack to the sound. So without, sounds like this. With. So you can see it just adds a little bit more of that top slap sound. And then I'm also using JST Clip again, same way I'm using it with the kick, just as another way of just kind of making it pop. And then I brought back the Pro R from FabFilter and I'm using the Bright Snare Chamber preset. I can't remember if I modified it at all, but uh, it sounds really cool and this is how it sounds with. So I thought it was really cool. It has this stereo width option right here that I really like, and it just kind of adds a little bit more of that slap back kind of reverb sound, which I thought sounded cool and definitely helped make it pop a little bit more and kind of spread out a little bit more in the stereo field. And then for that Glitch Hero hi-hat arpeggiated groove thing, it sounds like this. So the first thing I did was added some EQ, pretty much just shelving off a bunch of low end. Just wanted it to sound a little bit darker. And then I got that JST clip again, and then I'm also using this Fab Filter Pro R. And then I got this ping pong delay, which is actually the built-in ping pong delay from Steinberg and Cubase. So without, you can see it sounds okay, but it's a little boring. Almost sounds like there's some other drums layered on top or something, so I thought that was pretty cool. And then for the drums, I have them running into a drum group, and what I have on top of this drum group is this Shep's Parallel Particles plugin. I've talked about this on the podcast, and this is a really cool plugin. Um, some plugins tend to be a little bit gimmicky. Uh, I thought it might be the case with this, but I actually do like it. It, it does this sort of parallel compression sort of within the track without having to route it to another track and then blending it in. It kind of does that for you. So I thought that sounded cool. So without, sounds like this. So 
So I really like this plugin. It kind of takes the sound and beefs it up in a really pleasing way. And uh, I like using it, especially on drums and percussion. And then for the vocal elements of this track using Voice of Wind 80 and Voice of Wind Audrey, I wanted to experiment with using some different vocal type plugins. And I got this plugin a while back. I haven't used it that much, but it's this Nectar plugin from Isotope. And I thought it was really cool. I was just playing around with some different presets and just thought this sounded really interesting. It just kind of perked my ear up a little bit because sometimes when you hear vocal elements in EDM style tracks, you hear it sounds like some harmonization or, or you know, different elements of harmony. And I thought that would be a cool thing to experiment with, especially using more like phrase based stuff. So without sounds like this. And then with. So I thought that sounded pretty cool and kind of adds to that haunting vibe. And then I also have this stereo delay on it as well. That's without the delay. And then for the Voice of Wind Audrey, I also have this Transgate on here as well. Same preset as I had earlier, so it sounds like this. Let me go ahead and turn off these other effects. So this is just the Transgate on here. And then I also have this Nectar plugin on here as well. Sounds like this. And then I also have that stereo delay on there as well. All right, so last but not least, let's go ahead and start checking out the mastering that I did for this track. And I use the term mastering loosely. I'm not a mastering engineer. This is just basically what I do to try to get my tracks to sound a little bit more polished and finalized. So the very first plugin that I use at the very top is this plugin called Golfos. This is just kind of a generalized uh, setting that I have when I first load up any track that I start working on, and then I'll just play with it accordingly. Um, just pretty much got the recover at 31%, tame at 23%, and then a few other settings. I got brightness up a little bit. So with this bias percentage right here, what it does is pretty much favors either the recover or tame. So if you have a lot of frequencies that are being tamed and you want to bring those out a little bit more, or if you want to recover some of those more frequencies that are being masked, you can go ahead and favor that as well. So it's a pretty simple plugin. There's way more crazy stuff that's going on under the hood that I can't even explain, but it's a really cool plugin and definitely worth checking out. And then the next plugin in the chain is this Slate plugin. I got the trimmer on here and this is pretty much giving me some more headroom. And then I'm also using the virtual mix bus from Slate. And this is just a way of introducing some analog in the box kind of sounds. And I'm using the Brit 4K mode. And this is a, a mode that I usually use most of the time. Just, I really love how it sounds. And then this next plugin that I'm gonna talk about, it's a favorite of mine, I've talked about it many times. It's the SSLG comp from Waves. And settings on this are pretty standard from what I've used before, just attack at 30. I have the release set to auto, and then for the ratio, I tend to do a two to one or a four to one, depending on the track. For this, I'm using a two to one, so that's the settings for that. And then I don't have analog engaged because I don't like introducing any sort of noise that I don't really want to be there. And then I got the virtual tape machine from Slate. This is another plugin pretty much just using as a way of introducing a little bit more tape and analog sounds. It's I think it's a really cool plugin to use. Uh, it definitely sometimes isn't the greatest plugin to use, but I like it and just like to, you know, throw it on my mixes just to hear how it sounds. If, if it makes it sound good, then cool. If not, then I'll just take it off. And then I also have the Pro-Q3 on my mix bus, pretty much just doing a little bit of high passing in the lower subby, real subby areas where you don't really hear it, so it's not really necessary to be there. And then a boosted a little bit low end, pretty much just did like it's low shelf right here, carving out some of the low mids to you know, upper mids, just as a way of bringing in some clarity. And then I did a high shelf up here just to brighten it up a little bit. And then to take this track and give it that final volume I'm using two different plugins, I'm using Submission Audio's Flatline. This is a really cool plugin that I really like to use as far as the mastering stage goes. And 
pretty much just have the shape around 81%. Just kind of have the threshold not really that high up because I'm also using it in conjunction with Ozone 9. So this is doing more of the heavy lifting as far as the overall volume, but I'm just using the flat line in combination just a little bit. So without these plugins, this is how it sounds. So you can see when I engage Ozone 9, it really takes the volume and boosts it up and really makes it loud and, you know, cut through. And let's go ahead and listen to it with Ozone, but without Flatline, just to see what Flatline's doing. <laughs> Nothing too much, just an extra layer of, of limiting just to kind of take the track to its final sound. All right, so that about wraps up the Sound Iron session. I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like. Let us know what you think in the comments and subscribe for more videos like this, as well as new walkthroughs, composer interviews, podcasts, and much more. So until next time, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.